Hey everybody, this is Vril. Welcome back to Extended Timeline World War II. It is now September of 1989, meaning that we've actually covered 50 years so far in this series. Now, in the last few episodes, we've had this big war between China and Japan. Japanese are really losing out. The Chinese have occupied all of Japanese Korea, as well as Taiwan. And they've just captured a province here in the Philippines from the Japanese as well. We also had a war between, I think it was Mali, invaded Niger here, taking over a few provinces from Niger. Now the Cameroon is at war with Niger, and Cameroon is backed up by the Italians. Let me just look at the war view here. So we talked about the Chinese against the Japanese, Cameroon against the Niger, allied with Madagascar, and Mauritania. We also have the second British-Australian War for Independence. The British-Australians failed last time, but this time they are backed up by the USA and the Netherlands, so it should help out. The British are allied with the Soviet Union and actually Thailand, and... Mexico is in here as well. The U.S. is actually invading a lot of Mexico at the moment. The Soviets are actually reconquesting that area in Japanese Korea, which is actually formerly Soviet territory, and the French are reconquesting in Laos. Let's quickly look at our militaries of the world. The USA is on top, followed by the Chinese, the Germans, the Soviet Union, and the Netherlands. So the Netherlands are back, but their manpower is very low. Let's just go ahead and get started looking at the map. So. Cameroon just took over a piece of Niger there, so that war ended very quickly. And as I've said constantly over the course of this last few episodes, I'm just waiting to see what the Chinese end up doing with all this occupied territory they have. So the Japanese are actually fighting off some communist revolutionaries in Japan as well. But yeah, going back to this, the Soviets, this area here is all Soviet territory. Obviously this area is Korea, so I would be curious what the Chinese are going to end up doing with all of this when they decide they want to peace out. It does look like they have a stack arriving, just arrived in mainland Japan. It does not have a leader on it though, so probably the Japanese will be able to take that one out. Let's look at, let me just get back to our wars, our current wars going on. As I mentioned, the French have declared war on Laos again. They should really just declare war on Vietnam here and take that back. That'd be easy for them to do if they wanted. They keep going after Laos, which has this three-star general, not a very large army, but a three-star general, so I'd expect Laos to probably occupy all this. The French declare war on Laos, but they don't have any army there, so not very smart by them. The Soviets, I mean, they are have declared war, but there's not really much for them to even occupy to do anything there. Back in Mexico... Looks like the Mexicans have dropped out of that British-Australian War. The Americans had occupied a bunch of their land, and again, if you missed it in previous episode, the Americans have also crossed the Rio Grande here, taken all of these bordering with Mexico provinces in a previous episode. So the Americans were also sieging over here in New Finland as well. Again, for the British Australians and all these British colonies that are trying to seek their independence here. Got some Tibetan reactionaries here as well. So here we go, we'll probably have this... Yes, Japanese are attacking this Chinese stack. I would expect for the Japanese to win this one. They're on their home turf and they actually have a leader on their stack. Let me bump up the speed to two. I didn't realize we were actually running that slowly. So the Japanese won that one. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese finally, at this moment, I mean, they're, they're not going to be able to take over much more of Japan. So they might as well just peace out, rebuild some army, and go back, you know. Okay, there there it is, right there. So... 
Looks like the Chinese gave back the Japanese Korean area that was called Japanese Korea here to the Soviet Union. Looks like the Japanese have held on to Japanese Korea and they've actually held on to most of Taiwan except for the one province that the Chinese actually wanted. So that war is over. The Soviets are still at war with Japan, although I would think that will end shortly. And it looks like we've got the Iranians have declared war on Iraq. So let's head on over to the Middle Eastern areas here. Looks like the Iraqis have 29k stack. The Soviets must have military access through here. Looks like the Iranians have a 47k stack plus a 41k stack here. So it's more than likely that the Iranians are going to win this particular war. Iranians do have claims on Turkey as well. Turkey's been a little quiet recently. They had a couple wars against, not a couple wars, but they did have a war against Greece. And they were involved in some other wars because they were allied with, I think, Egypt and I think Italy had declared war, or something like that anyway. But they were involved in some other wars. Looks like the Saudi Arabians have some revolutionaries rising up there as well. So yeah, we've got the Soviets are again on the side of the British, so they're probably this area of British Mag are they calling this British Maghreb still? I think so. I can barely read that, and if I go down there it I wouldn't think that'd be Maghreb though. <laughs> Alright, anyway, the Iranians are occupying Iraqi territory now. So, yeah, it's hard to follow the war, the British-Australian War, just because the territory is so scattered. You can see the a lot of African, British-African colonies are allied together. We do have the Netherlands actually here as well. Look at this, we've got Soviets in the Netherlands here, <laughs> which is obviously like this is areas in Indonesia and Malaysia in the modern world anyway so that is the Netherlands in this world because they've been kicked out of Europe by the Germans yeah the Soviets have a 125k three-star general so not much is gonna go up against that we also have an Angolan change of government Angola and Mozambique against the Democratic Republic of Congo and Belgium. So Belgium, I guess they're pretty weak at this point because they did have that war with the Germans, where the Germans won. Apparently the Americans are in French Indochina. Who are they? Not sure why. They must have some sort of military access or something like that with the French. Not sure why they'd be doing that. See, yeah, the Japanese here just need to rebuild their army and refocus everything, although, as we discussed in the previous episode, they they were actually trying to westernize their eastern tech group, and they had reactionaries rise up that prevented them from westernizing, so they're stuck with the eastern tech group for a little while, which is pretty bad because the Chinese are western tech group, not going to help. We'll see what the Chinese end up end up doing. I know a lot of you guys were wondering why China is not going into Tibet. I'm curious myself why they're not doing that. So the Soviets now occupying parts of the Netherlands here. Seems very odd to be calling that the Netherlands, but it is what it is. We do have, is this a, one, another one of these Indian Kingdom Wars here going on? We have too much to follow already. Looks like that Iranian-Iraqi War ended and the Iranians took over. You can see several provinces on the border with Iraq there. 
So I don't think the Iraqis are probably going to be able to recover from any of that unless unless they get some sort of separatist movement working in Iran. Is the Saudi Arabia at war with Iraq as well, I believe, but they didn't take any of the territory there, but the Iranians successfully doing it there. Okay, we've got another another f f uh, Indian war going on there. So the Soviets are getting some positive war score here somehow. Okay, they're in Japanese Korea here. They've obviously have military access through China since they're allied with China. The French have arrived in French Indochina to try to take out the Laotians here. Although previous in their previous war there, the even though the French have this 37k stack, they didn't want to face off against this Laotian stack since it's a three-star three-star general. So. I know we're spending a lot of time looking at this war map, uh, or current war screen, but just want to keep an eye on it. So it's not good for the British Australia that the Soviets are... look like they're going to be able to just flood over into this area that the Netherlands hold. There's a lot of military access going on as well. I mean, we've got the Soviets all over the place here, moving their, their forces through. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what the Soviets end up taking, because obviously they, they have what they wanted. This They were actually... let's see... well, I won't spend too much time looking for it here, but... Yeah, here, this this particular province is actually what they declared war on Japan for, so... No longer need any of that. Sorry, I actually messed this screen up, but I want to keep it on the current wars. Yeah, the Soviets just flooding over into the Netherlands. Anything else? We've got... Israel is actually apparently its own little little country here now. I did not uh, see that happen. Maybe maybe that's been around for a little while, but I didn't notice it. Did not see that. So looks like we've got yeah we had this war between Angola or who was it? We've actually got a Romanian-Hungarian war going on, just fired off. So we have Angolan change of government in Democratic Republic. So that doesn't seem to be going very well. Seems like the Congo is... Okay, we've got a 15k stack of the Angolan troops here. But they haven't been able... Looks like Congo is really occupying that. So let's have a look up here. What's going on between Romania? Romania is allied with the Germans and Croatia against the Hungary, Yugoslavia, and France. So it's interesting that the Hungarians would be allied with the Yugoslavians considering that territory was occupied by Hungary at, at one point. And again, that was a Romanian-Hungarian imperialist war, so... Romanians declared war on this one. Look at that. Yugoslavia is just like minor. So we've got the Germans are going to move over into France here. Belgians are sitting there with a three star general, it looks like. So yeah, I would say that the Hungarians, or sorry, the Romanians being on the side of the Germans. It's going to be very good for them. And they've actually got a little bit larger army. I think they just defeated this Hungarian army and because it's out completely out of morale. It's going to go very well for the Romanians here. Do we actually have... what's going on here? Why is Belgium occupying parts of France? 
Okay, that is because we have the Spanish, Spanish West African War for Independence, so Spanish West Africa with Italy, Somaliland, France against Spain, Belgium, and Brazil. So that's a very difficult one to follow. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Quite uh, complicated things going on right now in this episode. A lot of wars firing off. I mean, we had uh, a moment of relatively peaceful time. In the few episodes ago, we had no wars going on for a little while. And then in the last episode, at one point, it was only the Chinese and Japanese war going on. So I thought we might get a period of no wars. Anything else? Fire off. Yeah, the Romanians... Have that positive war score. I think this is probably the most interesting one going on right now. At least it's it's relatively easy to follow. That that I'm interested in the British Australian one, but it's just so scattered around. I mean, they're really mainly fighting that that war in what is Indonesia, occupied by the Netherlands. But yeah, that is not going well for them because it's complete completely being occupied by the Netherlands. The Soviets are also have a pretty positive war score against the Japanese here. Now we've got an Iranian-Afghan war. That, the Iranians are going aggressive here. Yeah, they have a large army, so we'll see. I mean, they're going to get some aggressive expansion going on here, so we'll see if the if the uh, Soviets end up putting the Iranians in their place, I mean they're they're large, but they're they're gonna have some negative opinion because of this bordering with the Soviet Union, and then they're going aggressive. So no doubt they're going to take territory from the Afghans here, unless the the Afghans have no allies. The Iranians have no allies either. Got some Saudi Arabian Nash, uh, revolutionaries. Rising up there, the French have not really recaptured any of this area that's been occupied by the Laotians, although they looks like they did take out that Laotian army though, so not sure why they're not taking anything back. Wow, there's so, so many wars going on here. Let's uh, head back to Europe and see what's going on with that Romanian war. We've got the Belgians fighting, fighting the... Is that the Italians in France? Okay. Alright, and this war just ended. Hungary has been reduced to one province. Wow. So that is a quite a turn of events for them. They they were growing pretty large at one point in time, and then Poland put them in their place, and now Romania has taking care of them as well so again we've got the Spain fighting the Italians this one and the Iranian Afghan war that's going positive as well let's check out what is causing the Soviets to okay the Soviets have captured all of Japanese Korea they've captured it's like a couple provinces here that the Japanese still hold and just like I said in previous episodes, the Soviets occupying Japan is really hard to see. Okay, so we've got that Laotian stack. Apparently it came back somewhere, unless I was completely missing it, but the the French did win that. How's that war score going for the French? I would think it's... Okay, it is going positive for them now. And Angola is winning against that Democratic Republic. And Spanish West African for independence, okay. Spanish West Africa is there. So you can see they're allied with the French and the Italians against the... I didn't realize that the Germans were in on that, so they must have... I don't think they were in that the whole time. They must have joined that one later. So that's who the Germans are at war with and who they're allied with. They're allied with the Turks here. 
I'm surprised that the Turks haven't gone a little bit more aggressive. They might, maybe they will uh, in a future episode with the Ron going aggressive and they're getting all that aggressive expansion. The Turks might try to take advantage of that aggressive expansion for their own means. Alright, but it does look like we're out of time for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this one, and please consider hitting the like button if you did, as it really helps out the channel. So I'll see you guys next time.